Florida yesterday, today, and tomorrow. What is a clean water candidate? A clean water candidate is a man or woman who is willing to look constructively at the past, the present, and the future. Willing to count the cost of the changes to Florida from development, from agriculture, and from industrial uses. Water flow, quantity, and quality. We are at a tipping point. The Caloosahatchee, the St. Lucie rivers, Lake Okeechobee, the Everglades are a water management nightmare. We need voters willing to demand for a candidate that will be willing to take an honest approach to get back to real quality water management. A candidate who is not in the pocket of anyone, just clean water. Dr. Jim Lacasio, PhD, and Tommy Locke from Captains for Clean Water are here to speak to these issues. Water management began as far back as the 1800s in Florida and the consequent landscape alterations to help divert and control uh, the flow of water in Florida continued as Florida became more urbanized, uh, more settled. Uh, in the early 1960s, some very big steps were taken by the Army Corps of Engineers to connect the Caloosahatchee River to Lake Okeechobee, to uh, straighten out the river to make long straight stretches for the conveyance of water quickly. And this is flood control. Uh, this was done also on the east coast, the St. Lucie River and Estuarine system. So today, Lake Okeechobee is managed as, as a reservoir. Um, a large berm exists around the south end that's in deteriorating condition. Uh, a lot of flow control structures are put in place in the rivers. Uh, all of this fresh water is essentially um, managed for storm water and flood control purposes. The quality of the water is deteriorated substantially by uh, stagnation effects that happen in uh, Lake Okeechobee as it's functioning like a reservoir and the contribution of very uh, uh, high levels of nutrients associated with uh, the agriculture that is part of our state's economy. I remember back in, I can't think what it was, I was fishing Joe Shireen, so there was one time they did release, I remember them releasing water out of Okeechobee, or out of Clusatchee River, out of Okeechobee, okay. They released it, and I was fishing, I used to fish them in May, and this was called, we had a pretty good winter storms and stuff like that, and the lake got too high, and I was fishing down at uh, Chino, there's a place I used to fish you torquing down there and it was a great early season and then we'd fish here and then I'd take them and we'd go to home size after that. And this was like the end of April. And I'm sitting down there and we fish here for like four days before I take off. And down there at Chino and I got all these fish down there and I was there for oh, about half day and all of a sudden I see this brown water coming at me. And I, I fish, I keep moving past it. I move from Chino down to Regula and it's still coming at me and the fish are moving ahead of it and they get all the way to Demery, Demery Key and then I, I stop, okay, the end of the day. I go back the next day down there to Demery where I started and I run into this stuff at the South Rocks and then Bird Key Basin and all the stuff that I fish these tarpon in, I couldn't fish there. I had to back all the way up to their new Seppa flat area and fish them there. And then it pushed me all the way, in four days, pushed me all the way to the harbor of water coming out of that bay right there. And I knew exactly what it was back then. I don't remember the red tide or they might have quit the release, but that's how far it pushed me and pushed the fish out. And that's just the nutrients coming out of that area. Well, the height of lake back in the history, I think, of the lake, the lake was, you know, seven, eight, maybe nine feet, you know, for years and years before they ever put that in and then they had the hurricane and the depth and then they put the dike around it. In the past years, they've held the lake really high. Back when I first started duck hunting over on the lake, oh man, would be lucky if the lake got to 9, 10, 11 feet. 11 feet were real high. And now the lake's getting up 13, 14 feet and then they start pressing and they start releasing. But the duck hunting on the lake and the fishing on the lake are fantastic when it's on its lower stages. So they're keeping this lake much higher 
because of the amount of water coming out, they're not being able to release it. If they release too much on us, then we get too many nutrients, and then everybody starts complaining here. St. Lucie, you killed miles and miles of grass. There, they're killing our river, the Clusahatchee's like no grass, nothing, nothing's growing in there. There's nothing growing in uh, over in the St. Lucie in parts. All the turtle grasses, the natural grasses we have, they're going away. And then when I get out in the sound and stuff where I got all these turtle grasses, there's so many different algaes. There's mat grasses that grow over it. There's these different types of algaes that grow over it. And in the summertime, it gets real hot and then they release and then they come up and then they're floating. The current red tide bloom that's raging along our coast is producing fish kills and we're seeing these washing up on the beach right now. I'm receiving photographs from colleagues uh, from Boca Grande up through Little Gasparilla Island, sending pictures of the spawning stock of the snook that are on the beach right now, dead. This is the spawning stock, producing the future of the fishery. Next year's year class of snook will be very low because of this. We are also finding tarpon, which are here as a pre-spawning aggregation, and goliath grouper, an endangered species, is also washing up presently on the beaches of Charlotte Harbor due to red tide. Now, if we if we don't interrupt these nutrients getting in the water to give them the red tide, which is a natural thing, something to a fuel to start, where are our stocks going? Or, uh, Forget about that, our water quality, all our quality of water around here that we love and the people love to come to Bunker Grand to go to the beach or go boating, everything, the prices of real estate. Who wants to go to the beach out there when there's no life? I mean, it was been so depressing seeing the red tide sitting around here and you see no life. You don't see pelicans, you don't see birds, there's no food source. The, the amount of nutrients coming out of the lake are one of the biggest reasons I think I, what I've seen and the thing that I've seen since mm, say 2005, 2006 is when the water started. We started getting these rain back pretty heavy and so then the amount of nutrients or the amount of water release they release on the lake. Coming out over here I'm seeing these different grasses and then different algaes growing that I've never seen before. I mean I've just seen a change in the 20 something years I've been here, uh, it, it's just a sad sight to see it. And it affects my business directly, you know. I make a living doing this. And, but not only that, but you look at every business and every life and everything around the whole state of Florida, because you're not just, it's just not our area. I mean, it's sad that it's happening here. And, but you look and see what happened over at St. Lucie and the miles of grasses they've lost in that river, it's just ridiculous. But worse than that, if we lose the Everglades, the mother of our whole fishery, then I think the whole state of Florida is going to die. I mean, they're running out of water in Miami. Well, they kept that place in a drought for, I don't know, my whole life. and. I, to be able to have an act, ability to be able to release this water and bring back a wetland in Okeechobee that was a thriving place. For, for what reason? For just a handful of dollars that uh, the sugar companies are making? I, I, I don't even know how you do the math on this thing when you're talking about the, the whole state of Florida. I mean, you're talking about the fishery. The, the enjoyment, the bird watcher, and you gotta realize, you know, you don't have birds if you don't have fish. Because, if, you know, everything ties together. And so if we don't do something to stop this, these issues or correct these issues that have been caused by the Army Corps engineers, not directly caused by them, politicians let the stuff happen, and put something back in a natural flow to be able to bring this area back, we need to uh, get done to put the state of Florida back where it was, back when it was a river of grass, when it was a wetland area and the birds and the wildlife survived so well. And now we 
got a pond, a stagnant pond, that's causing all kinds of issues and not letting the water be able to you know, go its natural flow. It's important that Florida voters to be single-minded. The issue is environmental and it's also a socioeconomic issue. Tourism is a hundred million dollar driver for Florida's economy. The damage to our beaches are obvious, to our lakes, our rivers, the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic, to the Everglades, and now health issues for pets and for people are profound. Please consider becoming a clean water voter.